Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with the next installment of What Would Kelly Make? Today we're going to be talking about multi-layer stamping. So the stamp set that I am using today is actually part of a bundle. This is the Build a Flower Carnation Stamp Set and Die. I absolutely just adore the sentiments in this set. They're all about kindness and it's just, it's just a really sweet set. I typically do not do multi-layer stamping, but when I started the series, it was about teaching you guys things and challenging myself, so here we are. Um, quite a while ago, I saw a video by Jennifer McGuire where she used um, her Misty and was able to get all of her stamp layers onto one section of it, and that's what I'm doing today, because it's awesome. Um, I don't have to worry about lining it up. I can stamp it as many times as I need to. It's just, it's a great trick to have. So I cut an A2, which is a five and a half by four and a quarter size card front in half. Um, and then I am stamping it. So I stamped the first layer in the lightest color. And I know Altenu and there's a couple of other um, stamp companies. I know W plus nine, they have um, like little cheat sheets on the back of their um, stamp sets or they have a printout on their website um, and so you can see where to line them up at. One of the things that I did notice um, with this is because these stamps are so um, large, there's so much surface area, sometimes when you pull them up with the misty door they kind of move that paper even though you have the magnets there so just make sure everything's flush against the side and then we're gradually going to get darker as the layers get smaller. Here I'm going to flip it to the side so that I can line it up on the left hand side versus the right and this is how I'm going to be able to fit all four of those layers on one side. So for this next color it's going to be slightly darker. Um, I am, you can see on the right hand side, that other um, stamp is kind of hitting my paper a little bit. Um, you could definitely trim this down to be a little bit smaller but I liked having more area for my magnet to sit on. Uh, so I know that my paper wasn't going to wiggle. So to me, that was worth it. And I'm going to be die cutting these anyway. So whether or not it gets on that corner of my paper doesn't really matter to me. So I'm going to stamp this one down. And then if you, like I have always, one of the things I have always had trouble with was picking colors. Um, so there are a couple of different kind of tricks that you can use for picking colors. Um, for this one, I, um, I started with a blue, uh, even though it's a, purple flower, my lightest, my highlight color is, uh, it's called Barely Blue because the, the mid-tones are more of like dusty purples and so um, it still ends up looking like a blue-violet flower uh, which just has like tons of dimension because of all the layers that we just did. Um, but don't be afraid to kind of play around with the colors that you have and see what's going to work for you. Um, so now that I have that all set up, which is by far the most time consuming part, the first one that you do, um, making sure everything gets all lined up, then you can just like bam, 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 stamp them out um, super fast, <laughs> which is awesome. Especially if you're doing something like, you know, uh, Christmas cards or birthday um, invitations, anything like that where you want to do multiples, this is like the easiest way I have ever stamp layered ever. So for here, another color option, if you don't have a lot of inks or if you don't have um, kind of like the perfect tone for what you're looking for, um, you can stamp them twice, which is the joy of the Misty or any other, uh, you know, stamping tool like this. Um, when I originally stamped this, it looked good. Like it looked dark enough, but I had stamped one previously and as that, um, ink evened out, it kind of blended in more than I wanted. So that's why I stamped the watermelon twice. This is another reason why this setup is great because you can kind of, since you're stamping multiples or you have the option to stamp multiples, um, you can see, you know, if once that ink dries back, if it's something that you're still going to be happy with. The last color that I'm going to do is going to be kind of like a yellowish gold. Um, so we're going to kind of run the gamut here. I'm starting with, um, I always say this one wrong. I always want to call it, I want to call it Goldilocks, but that ain't it. Golden locks. See, enunciation is important. Anyway, um, so I started with that one, which is a super bright yellow. And then I also use this Clementine color, which is a little bit more on the orange side. And you would think that would be darker than the sunshine color, but it's actually not. Um, 
so I kind of when I do these like when I'm picking my colors I kind of just like swatch them out a little bit on a piece of paper to see you know what's going to be darker what's going to be lighter and then go from there I did end up um, stamping the sunshine color twice because again it kind of um, just as it smoothed out kind of dried back a little bit and I didn't have as much definition as I wanted and then so starting from that golden locks now we're all the way going to go down to the orange peel which is a super bright orange color um, but sitting on top of all of these yellows kind of knocks back the brightness a little bit and I apologize for that little bit of a reflection there if there's a light that sits above my desk so that I have good lighting for my videos and you could definitely see the reflection in the door so for the leaves I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for the um flower I'm gonna have all of the pieces parts on my misty this is the miniature sized one um, and there was a, this is my, this is my own bad. This is the joy of uh, being an animal lover. There was a dog hair on my stamp that I didn't see. So that's why I'm stamping it again. Cause there was like one line in one of my leaves, um, a little Molly hair that got in the way. It's my doggie's name, Molly. So I'm going to stamp the base layers and here I used scuba. Yeah. I used scuba and then, um, uh, key lime that's what it is um, for my lightest colors and then I'm going to flip them over I did have to do a little bit of moving around because of um, that I wanted more than one of the smaller ones um, so I did kind of have to adjust that but it was I mean it took like 10 seconds and then for the darker color here I am using uh, teal and for the darker color on the smaller leaves I am using I think it was fern um, so, and then I can just go right up to the top now that I have the blank area and stamp those out again, um, and just add the layers as I go. I did off camera, just cause I was kind of experimenting with the colors. I also used, um, green leaf and midnight green. So I just kind of mixed those. Nope. I didn't use the midnight green. I used the olive, sorry. So just kind of mix that up. And here I'm just showing you how you can see um, the difference from when you double stamp them versus when you stamp them just one time and kind of how they blend back. Um, just a lot of, you know, kind of fun combinations that you can do. And then I'm going to start die cutting them. So these uh, die cuts already come separated. So it's super easy. You peel it off the sticky strip and then cut them. And then honestly, I was done. But as I started thinking about how I wanted my design to go, um, I really wanted to add some gold kind of splatters in the background. I knew um, I wanted to have black stripes. We'll get to that in one second. Um, so I'm stamping these out in green and then I'm going to do the detail layer. These are, I waited for the green to dry and then I'm going to stamp in Versamark. And the reason I'm going to stamp in Versamark is because I want to add some gold accents. So the detail is going to be in gold. Originally, I thought to myself, um, well, I'm going to gold emboss it. But me and gold embossing powder have a love-hate relationship. Meaning I love it in real life, but it photographs terrible. <laughs> so um, I decided I was going to go in with the Perfect Pearls. Um, and that would give me enough of the gold. It would stick to the Versamark kind of as I padded it on. And it would give me enough um, shine for the card without just messing with my photography, basically. So once I put that on, I'm just going to buff off the extra. Uh, you can still see it's still nice and gold. And then Perfect Pearl set with water. So I just miss some in the air and kind of wave my paper through it. For the next part, um, one of the... <laughs> One of the reasons that um, I do enjoy stamp layering, which is, like I said, I don't do it very often because I like to color, but I love, absolutely love a bold black stripe or a bold polka dot with florals. I just love them. Um, I think that it's just a beautiful design element. And so I have the wide stripes background from Simon's Stamp here, and I'm going to stamp this in black. I masked off the bottom because I only wanted a portion of it to have the striping, i.e. the top of my card. And I actually stood up from my chair and gave it good pressure. I Sherry Carroll CPR'd it. 
um, and I just did end up stamping it twice. That was my own fault because I got lazy with the inking. I just felt like I had been inking it forever and I was like, I'm just going to stamp it and see what we got. If I got to do it again, I'll do it again. And I did have to do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Um, but I wanted to do the perfect pearls using the gold kind of spatter in the background. Um, so that is what I'm doing here. I was too lazy to get out the Ranger Craft mat, so I'm just doing it on an acrylic block. And then I'm just going to put out some clean, clear water and stir that into the Perfect Pearls powder. And then I'm just going to splatter it kind of at a diagonal from top left to bottom right. And you may be looking at this like, Kelly, that is a lot of gold spatter. And it is, but these flowers are very large. Definitely one of them on its own could carry a card. And I'm trying to fit three on a card. In order to help my flowers and my leaves stay where I want them while I'm arranging, there's nothing I hate more than chasing die cuts all over my desk. Um, I put a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back and then just pat it so it's barely tacky. And then that way they will stay where I want, but they won't stay permanently so I can get my arrangement down. Here, I knew I was going to pop up some of the flowers, so I wanted to go ahead and get the sentiment stamped. Um, before I adhere to everything down. This says, your kindness melts my heart. Um, like I said, I love those sentiments that I'm trying to, what does the other one say that I really, really liked was, um, kindness is free sprinkled everywhere. Like just, it's so cute. So anyway, here, don't mind my mini earthquake there. I bumped the camera. Sorry. Um, I'm just, I have everything down. I've removed the flowers that tackiness of the Tombow Mono Multi Glue because it is repositionable once it dries, but it's permanent when it's wet. So I'm going to go back in um, and just kind of hold those in place and put actual the, the uh, wet glue underneath it and then move on to the flowers. So this yellow one I adhered down flat just like I did the leaves. And then um, from there, I'm going to start kind of popping them up. For the pink one, I'm going to pop it up entirely. So I'm using Scotch foam tape, um, just a couple of pieces, and I'm going to pop this one up entirely. For the purple, um, it's kind of going to be a hybrid because part of the purple is going to sit on top of the pink, and I don't want it to be any higher than the pink. I want it to be flush. So I just laid it there so I could see what part would be touching the pink. I'm going to put glue on that portion and then the same Scotch foam tape on the other side so that it's level. That pretty much completes my little flower arrangement there. I've got my gold leaves. In order to bring in that gold just one more time, I'm going to use some gold sequins. Um, they're big enough that I could adhere them just with my fingers, no problem. And then to make sure that they stay through the mail, I like to put just a drop of glossy accents into um, the cup of the sequin. I'm going to add just a little bit more shimmer with the clear Wink Estella onto the center of my flowers. And then that is the whole card. So I hope that you learned some tips and tricks for the, the multi-layer stamping. Um, and just kind of maybe some other fun ideas that you would like to incorporate into your own card making. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.